You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Backpack Extravaganza by Sheila Roberts. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. The Backpack Extravaganza that was a huge success last year with 2,300 people in attendance is back again this year at the First Assembly of God Church in Highland, Arkansas on August 6th. While its primary focus is to ensure kids have necessary school supplies, it also brings the community together in one outstanding effort to get these kids off to a happy beginning of a new school year. Inspiration for the Backpack Extravaganza came from the Significant Church Network a network of rural churches that pool their ideas, concepts, and resources to help communities around the United States. Pastors Chris and Tricia Clem had a vision of an event that was designed to equip area students with the tools they needed to succeed in school. Clem had heard of other churches in Shenandoah, Kentucky, and Clovis, New Mexico doing this. It was a way for the community to galvanize and show the love of Christ in a practical way. This is a project that bypasses denominational and sociopolitical differences, he said. When he presented the idea to the church leadership team, they thought it was a great fit for students and families in the area. The idea was brought before the church, and the church caught hold of the vision. Afterward, the Sharp County Ministerial Alliance, which makes up about 15 to 20 churches, joined forces on the project. The idea was brought before the Highland School Board and Superintendent James Floyd, who were all supportive of the idea. Many local businesses have come on board to help with the project. The Sharp County Community Foundation awarded a grant for $1,000. FNBC Bank has donated 755 backpacks. And Liberty Bank has donated more than 2,000 two-inch binders. Church member Tommy Duncan, who owns and operates Tommy Hair Figures in Ash Flat, heads up a project that includes 15 pro stylists to provide haircuts for students. Price Chopper Grocery Store has donated 4,000 Ziploc bags, and the Arkansas Community Foundation has donated $1,500. The Lions Club provided for 450 vision checks at the first backpack extravaganza, during which 15 children were helped into getting glasses that they needed. Several nurses in the church have arranged for multiple physicians from diverse practices to be there for medical checkups. All of these services are free to the students. Countless businesses, churches, community service organizations, and individuals contribute time, finances, and effort into the initiative. The list of contributors is extensive. This is truly a community-wide event. Mark Martin Ford will have one of their race cars on display, and there will be a car show with members of the Spring River Car Club. The Highland Fire Department and Police Departments will have their special vehicles on display. The Highland Fire Department and Police Departments will have their service vehicles on display and will be giving away plastic fire hats for the kids. There will be booths for businesses, organizations, and corporations such as Cox Kawasaki, Ozarka College, and Arivac. KSAR radio station 98.3 will have a live remote broadcast going on during the event. Refreshments, entertainment, and bouncy houses for the kids will be there. This is really going to be an extravaganza. All the funding and supplies are donated from the community. The backpacks, which are filled with specific basic supplies, are valued at approximately $75 a piece and will be in one of three categories, elementary, middle school, or high school level. Churches, businesses, organizations, corporations, individuals, and families in combination effort donated an estimated $35,000 worth of supplies and services for this backpack extravaganza. Anyone can donate. Just contact Barbie Bagwell at the First Assembly of God in Highland. Phone 870-856-3886. So keep your eye on the calendar for August 6th and look for this event at the Highland Assembly of God located at 33 Meadow Book Drive right on the four lane behind Mark Martin Ford in Highland. It is free and open to all the area students and their families. Pre-registration is not required. It will save some time for the more enjoyable activities if one is pre-registered. But just contact the church office or come early and get in line. Gates open at 8 a.m. and the event ends at 2 p.m. Come early and enjoy this great event. You can log on to the Highland First Assembly of God website to view footage of last year's event at highlandassembly.com. One has to ask, with support like this, how could the children in this community do anything but succeed? Thanks for listening. Be sure to add us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. And keep listening to Spring River Chronicle. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. 
State Capital Week in Review from Senator Missy Irvin. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Arkansas shoppers can enjoy the state's first sales tax holiday the weekend of August 6th and 7th when retail stores will not charge sales taxes on purchases of school supplies and articles of clothing costing less than $100. Accessories under $50 will also be exempt from the sales tax. Shoes, boots, and sandals will also be exempt if they cost less than $100. The sales tax holiday is a result of the Act 757, enacted earlier this year by the legislature. Although it was labeled a back-to-school tax holiday, it will benefit all consumers who buy clothes and accessories. No sales taxes at all will be collected, neither state nor local taxes. That means shoppers will pay what the sticker price indicates for clothing, accessories, and school supplies. Clothing that will be exempt from the sales tax includes footwear, diapers, wedding apparel, gloves, aprons, hats, neckties, even rubber pants. Exempt accessories include jewelry, cosmetics, briefcases, watches, wigs, hair lotions, umbrellas, and non-prescription sunglasses. Exempt school supplies include binders, paper, notebooks, markers, pencils, rulers, and protractors. It is a long list of items that common sense dictates are needed for school. It also includes art supplies, such as paintbrushes, paint, clay, and drawing pads. Maps, globes, and reference books are also included in the items that will be exempt from sales taxes. There is no limit on the number of items a consumer can buy and still benefit from the exemption. For example, you can buy half a dozen shirts for $20 each and not pay sales tax on any of them even though the total is more than $100. However, if you buy a dress for $120, you will have to pay sales taxes on the entire amount of the purchase. Calculators are considered school supplies and will be exempt, but computers and software are not. Sales tax will be collected on computers and periphery equipment. There will be a back-to-school sales tax holiday every year in Arkansas. Act 757 says that it will be on the first weekend of August, which this year falls on Saturday, August 6th and Sunday, August 7th. Act 757 was one of a package of tax cut measures enacted by the legislature in the 2011 regular session. Act 755 reduces the state's sales tax on groceries by half a cent. Act 754 lowers the sales tax on utility bills of manufacturing plants. Act 753 makes more used cars purchases exempt from the sales tax by raising the exempt level. Previously, used car purchases were exempt from the sales tax if the car costs less than $2,500, and now they are exempt if the car is sold for less than $4,000. In lottery scholarships, more than 30,000 academic challenge scholarships have been awarded by the state higher education department to students who will attend a four-year university or a two-year college in Arkansas this fall. Money for the scholarships come from the state lottery. More than 12,000 scholarships went to graduating high school students who will attend college for the first time this fall, and more than 18,000 went to college students who received the scholarship and had them renewed because they maintained a 2.5 grade point average and completed 27 hours. That was a look at your State Capitol Week in Review, and keep reading the Spring River Chronicle. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Sharp County Fair and Livestock Show by Cindy Harris. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. The lights and sounds of amusement park rides, the smell of cotton candy, wide-eyed children tugging on their parents' hands to go look at the animals, folks hustling to get their entries registered on time. These are just some of the experiences that the Sharp County Fair will bring when it opens on July 25th and continues until July 30th at the Sharp County Fairgrounds on Fairground Road in Ash Flat. This is the family time that all Sharp County and surrounding area residents look forward to each year. According to Nancy Orr, Secretary Treasurer of the Fair Board, the Lions Club will have a food booth with hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and all the fixings. The Midway, with its bright lights and carnival music, will contain the traditional foods that fair growers look forward to, such as funnel cakes, popcorn, and cotton candy, and several games of chance. The admission gates will open at 5.30 p.m. on July 26th through 28th, at 5 p.m. on July 29th, at 4 p.m., and on July 30th at 4 p.m. Admission tickets cost $3 for adults, 
and two dollars for children, but don't throw away those admission tickets. There will be a door prize drawing every night at 9.30 p.m., and the winners must have an admissions ticket to claim the prize. The rides will be up and running each night from July 27th to July 30th, beginning at 6 p.m. each day, and they are expecting more exciting rides this year, particularly for the older teens. Armbands may be purchased in advance for $12, and this allows the purchaser to ride any ride unlimited amount of times that night. The cost of the armbands at the gate will be $15. With the exception of food and rides, there is no additional cost for the events. There will be a beauty pageant for all ages, judging, and exhibition of arts, crafts, and homegrown flowers and crops. In addition to the midway treats and rides, there will be rodeos and entertainment, including the Dennis Horton Band on July 29th and the Billy Joe French Band to close out the fair on July 30th. Of course, it wouldn't be a Sharp County Fair without the Livestock Show. Besides judging contests for the prize-winning livestock, many children will enjoy the chance to see farm animals up close, some for the first time ever. The bright pink Sharp County Fair books, which may be obtained at many local businesses such as banks, convenience stores, and so on, have complete listings of all the activities plus their deadlines for entry. If you have any questions, you may call Nancy Orr at 994-7753. The Sharp County Fair of 2011 is shaping up to be one of the best attended and most fun fairs in recent years, so mark it on your calendar and get the family together for an enjoyable night of G-rated entertainment and see you at the fair. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and keep listening to Spring River Chronicle. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. District 80 in review. Lottery Scholarship Deadlines by Linda Collins-Smith. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Applications have been reviewed, and so far, more than 30,000 Arkansas students have been awarded a lottery funded by the Academic Challenge Scholarship to help pay for college. More than 18,000 of those students are current recipients whose awards are renewed. The other 12,377 of those awarded went to graduating high school seniors entering college for the first time this fall. More than 900 applicants are eligible for the scholarship but have not yet claimed it. Also, close to 8,000 students who previously received the award are on probation for not continuing to meet the requirements. They have until October 1st to submit summer school transcripts to prove their eligibility. The Department of Higher Education says overall around 70,000 students applied for the scholarship or were eligible for award renewal this year. Of all traditional students, those entering college directly from high school, applying 59.6% of them had met the criteria. More than 80% of current achievers who applied for renewal qualified. In addition, almost 6,000 of the non-traditional students who applied are eligible for the award. However, it is unclear how many of those students will receive scholarships. The funds available for non-traditional students are budgeted at $12 million after traditional students and current achievers are awarded. And the non-traditional scholarships will be given based on those who are nearest to the graduation or completion of their degree programs. This update on recipients came about the same time Arkansas Lottery officials announced this week that profits for the fiscal year ending June 30th came in under forecast. While most agreed this is less than optimal and that it's an issue to be addressed, officials at the Department of Higher Education say the profit shortfalls will not affect this year's scholarship recipients. In all, fiscal year 2011 lottery proceeds made $94.2 million available for scholarship. New recipients at four-year colleges will receive $4,500 and students at two-year schools will receive $2,250. Students who received the award last year and maintained eligibility requirements will continue to receive the original scholarship amounts. The General Assembly slightly lowered amounts this year because the number of students taking advantage of the scholarship was even greater than anticipated and the decrease in projected revenue necessitated the change. Many of us feel improving college graduation rates in Arkansas is a top priority essentially to the economic development of our state. While it's only a piece of the overall puzzle, one which we're still working, the Academic Challenge Scholarship will make it easier for more than 12,000 Arkansans to start their college careers this fall, and it will help make sure thousands more underclassmen return to campus. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Hardy names new executive director for Main Street Hardy. 
by Cindy Harris. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. The search is over. Main Street Hardy, Inc., the Hardy Main Street Business Association, has named Al Corte as the new executive director after an exhaustive 10-month selection process. With the position of executive director for Main Street Hardy, Inc. being vacant for approximately 10 months, the board of directors advertised and interviewed until they arrived at their top two candidates. Hardy is one of only 18 towns with main streets in Arkansas, and although the smallest, has attracted statewide interest as one of the state's top destinations. With that in mind, Main Street Hardy held a meet and greet in Little Rock for the board and Mark Miller of Main Street, Arkansas, to get to know the two candidates better. The result? In early June, they made the final decision to select Al Corte for the position as the best candidate with the experience, vision, energy, and enthusiasm that it will take to keep Hardy, Arkansas as a premier place to visit and to work hard to make it even better. Corte said he plans to make a hot list of priorities of areas on which to concentrate. It will be slow. It will take money. But even if we get it done a block at a time, it's doable. And it will take a lot of volunteerism, he said. What distinguishes a Main Street town or city from all other towns in the state? According to Al Corte, you have to have the historical value to apply to become Main Street town. And then the development and revitalization of downtown commercial areas sets these towns apart from others. However, Corte believes that with all the amenities in this area, such as the Spring River and access to hunting and fishing, it can be one of the best. Main Street Hardy, Inc. has a seven-member board of directors. The board is basically the driving force to form committees to get these things done. One of the board members, Donna Cruz, said Al is doing an exceptional job. She went on to say that this is a part-time position which only pays for 20 hours a week. However, he is putting in much more time than that. Money for the projects will come from donations and city and advertising promotion funds, grants, and special events. The main source of revenue is expected to come from several events to kickstart the programs of the development and revitalization. The Junkin' Jam will be the first big event on Labor Day weekend, September 3rd, 9 to 5. It's basically a big flea market with antiques, crafts, garage sale items, and food and entertainment, including a pet zoo for children, said Corte. Corte brings a diverse work background to the job. He has directed signature arts and crafts events, including juried shows, as well as directed motorcycle rallies, concerts, and festivals. In Phoenix, Arizona, he opened a multifaceted production company and, as a television producer and director, was a seven-time Tele Award winner. Corte was also a musician with a band that played every state except Alaska and Hawaii. As a sideline for additional income, he would occasionally buy land in a state and then eventually sell it for a profit. He did that in several states, but he never sold the land he bought here in Glencoe, Arkansas. Al said, I just fell in love with the area. I like to hunt and fish, and I love the outdoors. I like the low taxes and the laid-back community-type attitudes. So I just ended up here. As Corte stated, we've got to make it inviting. Talking about Main Street, make it look good and make people want to visit. We want people to come here and enjoy themselves, make good memories, and they'll want to come back. You can check out Main Street Hardy on the website at MainStreetHardy.com, and the email address is MainStreetHardy at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and keep listening to Spring River Chronicle. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Expanded Farmer's Market, a resounding success by Thomas Estes. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. The Cherokee Village Farmer's Market on Tekawitha is growing. With more vendors being added each week and the days expanded to cover Monday and Friday in addition to Saturday, the vendors are still selling out early due to even larger crowds of customers. In only its second week, the Cherokee Village Farmer's Market has met or exceeded all expectations. Jason Tompkins of Monette made the trip to Cherokee Village Farmer's Market to sell his huge succulent watermelons for $3 each. Bill Pippin of Cherokee Village came out to sell his incredible handmade birdhouses, which range from $10 to $60. Bill Pippin has long been making birdhouses, and they can be seen in a variety of locations in the Quad City area. The Farmer's Market was a chance to see the variety and skills of his craftsmanship. Also present was Odell Davis of M. Bowden, who was selling beautifully ripe watermelons along with sweet cantaloupes raised by his daughter, Diane Young. Jean Paul and Harold Presley of Cherokee Village were also on hand to sell a variety of things grown in the Cherokee Village Community Garden. 
The Presleys sell tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers, blackberries, okra, cabbage, green beans, new red potatoes, banana peppers, and even onion herb bread. The Presleys are only at the farmer's market on Friday and Monday, so customers should plan their trips accordingly. The Cherokee Village Farmer's Market is open Friday, Saturday, and Monday mornings from 8 till 1 p.m., but many vendors sell their entire stock and leave, so for the best selection, people should arrive early. Selling at the Farmer's Market is free, and interested vendors should bring a table, a chair, and their homemade goods. All in all, the Cherokee Village Farmer's Market has been a great success and promises to be a continuing and growing addition to the resources available to the residents of the Spring River area. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. From the Front, 120 Day Wins by Sergeant First Class Michael A. Eaton. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. I want to introduce you to a little known phenomenon that is a normal part of life here in Afghanistan. Just another dimension of being deployed to this very harsh and unforgiving place. This transpires every year over the course of approximately four months during the summer period. It is called the 120-day winds, better described as the as the 120-day of winds. The event plays havoc on the entire battlefield with effects on visibility and being able to maneuver. Imagine walking outside and looking up, feeling the wind of temperatures around 110 degrees filled with sand, dirt, and that fine powder we call moon dust. Slamming against your exposed skin, it feels like a high-pressure sandblaster peeling the outer layers of skin from everything you have that is not covered in clothing of some form. The sky is constant and solid shade of anything from light tan to dark brown, with a hint of red from the Registan Desert, and through this we walk or ride bikes each day, twice a day in most cases, to and from where we live on the other side of the FOB. This is what we look forward to each day during the summer months. The winds not only affect us soldiers on the ground, they also affect aircraft flying in support of ground operations. If helicopter pilots can't see, they can't fly. If they can't fly when medevacs don't happen, troops in contact have no aerial support and logistics don't make it out to distant small outposts, also known as COPS. When you walk outside and you can feel the dirt and dust settling on your face, it makes the shower you just took this morning before heading to work seem so pointless. Even inside buildings, the fine moon dust sneaks under the doors and even through cracks in the walls and settles on everything and in everything. It causes computers to malfunction and short out. It keeps a film of a brown on everything, no matter how many times you can clean your area. Not to mention the effect it has on the body. We breathe it in more and more each day, and there's no way to know the long-term respiratory effects it will have on us years down the road, and if we make it to retirement. It touches and pollutes every little thing all the time, day and night, within a matter of minutes. Our very uniform changes colors from the multi-cam browns, tans, and green pattern to solid shade of just tan. Literally, you will find the dust in places you never imagined it could reach, It is just that fine and gets blown all over constantly. The winds make all this happen. The real downside to it all is that it plays right into the enemy's hands. They know we can't fly. They know we cut back on patrols because we can't get support if we need it. They know our medevac birds can't get out to pick up injured soldiers in time to save their very lives. So they use the time to maximize their efforts against us with the rocket attacks. IED emplacements and bombings under the cover of the dust and haze provided by these winds. Not only do we lack aerial support, but we can't even see them to stop them. It is their home field advantage. They know these lands like the back of their hands and can navigate them in such conditions accurately, effectively. I appreciate my enemy and what advantage he takes over me. We all do. Never underestimate or lack respect for what your enemy is capable of. The minute you do, it is the minute he wins in, in a very every scenario. But as with the summer, the winds have to end, and they will, in the first part of September, which ushers in the rainy season leading into the winter months. Such is a cycle that is life in Afghanistan. This is the life of a deployed soldier, and like all other facets, they make up what we volunteer to do and endure. This is just another one on the laundry list 
this is part of deployment. Always remember, we volunteer to suffer through this for one battlement and security of the American way of life as you know it. So tomorrow morning, when you walk outside, take a deep breath of clean, fresh American air. See that bright blue sky with a few cotton puff clouds. Remember that soldier who is just getting back from patrol with the dust outline of his sunglasses or goggles set up on his face. Sweat lines running down his back from being out in the heat and dirt-filled air all day. Imagine how much he longs for the day when he too can enjoy the, that fresh American air again. From the front, this is Sergeant First Class Michael A. Eaton saying take care, God bless, and thank a soldier every chance you get. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. H. Potter. Hundreds attend midnight showing by Thomas Estes. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Late Thursday night, crowds began filling the Highland Twin Cinema for a special showing of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 at 12.01 a.m. on July 15th. This midnight showing provided Spring River Potter fans with a unique chance to be among the first to see the highly anticipated last movie in the Harry Potter film franchise. The Highland Twin Cinema began selling tickets weeks before the midnight showing, playing to an audience of 164, only seven of them children, doubtlessly up way past their bedtimes, who had poured into the 192-seat auditorium. Discussing the preparations for the showing, theater owner Kenneth Moore said that he was prepared to show the film on both screens if crowds overflowed into the other theater. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, rated PG-13, is a great adventure that, while taking some small liberties with the finale of the classic book series, it stays true to the Rowling story and its characters. The pacing of this movie is excellent. Each scene moves the plot forward in a significant and important way, and at no point does the movie begin to drag. In other words, go easy on the refreshments and take a bathroom break before the movie begins as you will not want to miss a single scene. Warning, spoilers ahead. The special effects are impressive and don't feel overdone, which is hard to do in a movie about magic. Alan Rickman, who portrays the slippery Professor Severus Snape, gives an incredible performance. Helena Bonham Carter playing Lestrange does a great job in a scene where Hermione uses Polyjuice Potion to impersonate her, capturing Hermione's awkwardness stumbling down Gringotts. The movie also makes full use of its PG-13 rating in the last half hour of the movie. In what has to be described as the Battle of Hogwarts, wizards go to war. Bodies of wizards are laying in debris after the fighting as Voldemort walks through the rubble, his bare feet red with blood of slain students. This scene, more than any other in the preceding movies, demonstrates the dark malevolence you-know-who inspires in the wizarding world. End of spoilers. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is a worthy finale to the film series that began a decade ago. It is a wonderful movie that is sure to delight audiences, but that PG-13 rating isn't just for show, so be wary of bringing very young children. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is an action-packed thrill ride. See this movie? We give it five stars. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Mission of Hope by Cindy Harris. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Tucked away on a busy yet overlooked scenic corner of Highway 62 and 412 in Hardy, the Mission of Hope has been serving citizens of this area since their mission began in early 2003. The mission is to feed families and house homeless men who are undergoing hardships due to the current economic climate and will soon also provide housing for homeless women and children. Sharp County's Mission of Hope actually accommodates families from five counties. Families come from Sharp, Fulton, Izzard, Lawrence, and Independence counties to get food on Thursday from 9 to noon. But as Julia Baldridge, administrator of the Mission of Hope, said, we never turn anyone away just because it isn't Thursday. Once we get them started, we ask them to come on Thursdays because that's when I have the most help. Anyone who qualifies may come in once a month to get food. The Mission of Hope Food Pantry has walk-in clients and referrals from DHS almost daily. Some of the DHS referrals just come to Mission of Hope until they can get set up on some food stamps. The food donations come from a variety of sources. An entire semi-truck load of different kinds of food is donated by the Arkansas Rice Depot every other month which requires Baldrige to direct more than 20 workers to unload the truck. This food is in the, then distributed not only to their Sharp County food, 
food and pantry, but six other pantries in surrounding areas. The food pantry also gets food donations from local businesses such as Pizza Hut, Walmart, Styles Discount Grocery, and Hometown Bakery. They will accept donations of cash from the public as well as items and toiletries. If you have any donations, you may drop them off at the Mission of Hope or call Miss Julia Baldridge at 856-5511. Baldridge praised the local businesses and the whole community for working together to help citizens who have fallen on bad times, especially in today's economic climate. As she said, we always hear the bad things about an area, but there is a lot of good in this area. There are a lot of good people who want to help others. In addition to having a food pantry to help those in need, the Mission of Hope has rooms to shelter up to eight homeless men at a time. Anytime there is at least one homeless man in, re in a residence, there is a full-time custodian on the property. There is a process that is followed to accept a man who is homeless, including filling out an application and having a background check to ensure there is no criminal activity history. While staying at the Mission of Hope, since there is no charge, the men are expected to do chores and carry out daily responsibilities such as cooking and cleaning. Alcohol and other drugs are not allowed, and their curfew is 9 p.m. on weekdays and 10 p.m. on the weekends. Baldrige said the doctor may order and transportation to and from to the doctor. As far as it goes, depends on how quickly it is used. She also stated they get help when needed to apply for Social Security Disability or to get a d duplicate Social Security card or duplicate birth certificate. While the Mission of Hope is available for homeless men, there has been no place for homeless women and their children to turn. But that is going to change, according to Ken Anderson, who is directing renovations on a building that had been vacant for five years. Hopefully, we will open the doors to our new women's shelter in Highland this fall. Work began on this shelter only four weeks ago, with inmate labor and volunteers doing all the work of the renovations. Anderson was quick to point out that this will not be a safe house. It will be a temporary shelter for homeless women and their children. Spring River Adult Child Services Sachs has started a 501c organization and strictly through donations. They are renovating a building in Highland that will have 12 bedrooms, three baths, one is handicap accessible, a large kitchen, and an extra large lounge area. All public areas are handicap accessible. They are accepting cash donations to aid in their efforts. A bedroom can be completely decorated for $200, including cleaning, paint, curtains, and floor tile. The Timely Club has donated cash to have two rooms decorated. Every donation of 40 cents will buy a tile. They are also in need of single or twin beds and dressers or chest of drawers for the bedrooms. There has been some furniture and even three new toilets donated. If you would like to donate cash or think that you might have something else they can use, please call Ken Anderson at 847-4646. In addition, mark your calendars for a fundraiser on October 8th at the Old High School Cafeteria. The Gardner boys will be playing and the tickets will be $7.50 each. There will be a bean and cornbread dinner as well and that cost will be donations only. All proceeds for this event will go to the Women's Shelter. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle, audio on the go. Rebel Booster Club holds four-person scramble by E.B. Barnes. First National Banking Company, get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. High 90s are nothing for these dedicated Highland Rebel golfers. 
On Saturday, July 23rd, the Highland Rebel Booster Club will hold a four-person scramble at the Cherokee Village South Golf Course, sponsored by six major sponsors and over 40 local booster club businesses. The Cherokee Village South Golf Course will host the scramble on its 18-hole regulation course. From the longest tees, it presents 7,058 yards of golf for a par of 72. The course was designed by Edmund B. Alt and opened in 1962. The course has been open for 49 years to this day. At 6.30 a.m. on July 23rd, the tournament will kick off with the buffet breakfast sponsored by First National Bank, followed by the shotgun start at 8.30 a.m. Those participating in the event will play the full 18 holes throughout the day with lunch served midday sponsored by FNBC. As the course is completed and all golfers make their ways back to the pro shop, burgers and hot dogs will be supplied. Once the results are in, trophies will be awarded to those with the best scores. David Webb, director of the tournament, has successfully organized the whole event in a matter of weeks and would like to thank each sponsor for their help in the scramble. The 2010 Rebel Booster Club's first golf tournament was supported by six major sponsors, 19 Rebel Booster Club businesses, and 44 hole sponsorships, Webb said. This year's four-person scramble once again has the same six major sponsors but over 40 rebel booster club businesses combined with the whole sponsorships there are more than 85 area businesses and individual sponsors involved for this year the event is a big success for the rebel booster club and even before the first shot is hit david webb said webb welcomes all golfers to sign up to play in the tournament and promises it will be a good time for all to be eligible to play in the scramble there's a 40 dollar entry fee per player or $60 to cover both the entry fee and the Booster Club membership, normally $25. And the entry deadline is Friday, July 22nd at 12 noon. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. Party Fire Department Sportsman Show attracts visitors near and far by Sheila Roberts. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. It was a hot day on July 16, but it didn't deter sports enthusiasts who came out to the 2011 Outdoor Sportsman Show at Loberg Park in Hardy, Arkansas. This annual event hosted by the Hardy Fire Department is for locals to enjoy as well as attracting visitors from across the country. One of the most popular events for the kids was the water curtain, a 30-foot wide by 30-foot high wall of spraying water. They hook a hose to a fire hydrant and turn it on, a great way to cool off, and the kids loved it. CDZ Manufacturing, which makes automated duck and turkey decoys, participated in the sportsman's event. The company, owned by Charlie Horrell of Hardy, had set up a display of his mallard duck decoys. The unique design for these special decoys is that they are battery-operated to make them bob underwater, giving them a more natural appearance. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission was represented by fisheries technician Jim Key. The portable aquarium on display was from the fish hatchery at Lowen Oak, Arkansas. He had a table set up with beautifully illustrated fish stickers, fish identification cards, coloring books, a beginner's fishing guide, and an Arkansas sport fish identification pocket guide, all free to those attending. The aquarium held live species of native Arkansas sport fish as part of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission's aquatic education program. One could view species such as largemouth and smallmouth bass, spotted and long-nosed gar, hybrid striped bass, and catfish just to name a few. Some attendees from Arlington, Texas were there with their family enjoying the display. Brody Renolet, teen race car driver, and Glenn Smithy of Hardy, his grandfather, were present with his 1980 Monte Carlo dirt track race car. Brody has been in eight races this year at West Plains Motor Speedway in West Plains, Missouri. In the most recent contest, he placed seventh out of 13 race car drivers. Service vehicles were displayed by the Hardy Police and Fire Departments. The police department had their uh, resource car, and the fire department had the fire trucks on display. Chief Rose explained how the fire and rescue support truck is equipped with scuba gear, and they use it often with the town of Hardy situated directly on the Spring River. The Hardy Fire Department River Patrol boat was also on hand. Chief Rose told how Judge Brown and Sharp County Sheriffs Weaver and Counts have been helpful in the Hardy Fire Department getting set up with equipment. The rescue boat painted fire engine red is quite impressive. Rose said this boat has a wide base which keeps it more stable during rescue operations. 
Once used by the Arkansas Corps of Engineers to haul brush, it now sports a state-of-the-art depth finder to aid in rescue and recovery operations. Chief Rose said that properly used, you can spot something as small as a twig in the bottom of the river. Mayor Nina Thornton and Doris Rose, the wife of Chief Rose, were serving up barbecue sandwiches with coleslaw from Bob and Sandy's Barbecue, along with a great variety of cold drinks. Members of the Spring River Presbyterian Church were present. These kind ladies and gentlemen were doling out free cookies, candy, stickers, tea, lemonade, and literature. They were accepting donations for the Ministerial Alliance, which participates in many worthy causes. The Riverview Compound in Hardy, owned and operated by Virginia and Don Harris, had an informational display of their rentals, which, which provide lodging for vacationers. The outdoor edge of Anniston, Alabama, had a booth set up. Owner Joe Powell was selling knives and camo gear, while his daughter Chrissy was handling the sales of sunglasses and purses. Mr. Powell said he is here visiting friends Steve and Carrie Miller of Miller's Leatherworks in Hardy. There was enough to see and do at this year's sportsman show to keep one busy. Although it may have been hot, there were plenty of cold refreshments and the water curtain for a quick cool-off nearby. So next year, don't let the heat keep you away from this show. Another wonderful free family event right on the Spring River in historic Hardy, Arkansas. You're listening to Spring River Chronicle. Audio on the go. First National Banking Company. Get checking that pays with Super Plus Checking at FNBC. Jody Shackelford here. Let's take a quick look at your weather forecast. Wednesday, July 20th, we are looking at mostly sunny skies and warm. 96 degrees for your high with a low of 73. On Thursday, July 21st, mostly sunny and warm. 95 for your high with a low of 74 degrees. Now on Friday, kicking off your weekend, they are looking at sunshine all day, maybe partly uh, patchy clouds here and there, 93 degrees with a low of 74 on into Saturday. Again, it's going to be partly sunny and hot. Saturday is going to be 94 for your high with a low of 73. Now all the way till Saturday, it's going to be a great weekend, but once we flip on over into Sunday, July 24th, thunderstorms are possible and they are calling for very, very, very Hot temperatures, 99 degrees for your high with a low of 72. They're actually calling for a heat advisory that's going to be in effect over the weekend. And kicking off your week with Monday, July 25th, a thunderstorm possible, 94 for your high with a low of 71. Keep checking us out in the paper, scanning and watching us online at myspringriver.com. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We really appreciate you, and thanks a lot.